Hi, my name is Todd, and I'm a Mariah Carey fan. Yes, yes, I know that there are many critics who think she's overrated and that they complain about her over singing and popularizing empty vocal gymnastics. And I'd like to ask those people, what's it like to be wrong all the time? Does it hurt? Do you dread waking up in the morning? Saying Mariah Carey should tone down her singing is like asking Eddie Van Halen to play less notes, or saying Babe Ruth should have hit less home runs. When Mariah sings, the world soars. And so, because I'm such a fan, I thought I should go ahead and check out her one and only attempt at a major film career, Glitter. Now, at this point in time, you have to understand that in her professional career, Mariah had never known anything but success. Right from her very debut album, she was making number one hits and selling at platinum level numbers or higher, and that had continued for seven straight albums. And so in 2001, after more than a decade of uninterrupted success, Mariah decided to branch out into movies, just like her predecessor Whitney Houston had a decade earlier with The Bodyguard. After all, that movie was a humongous hit, and its soundtrack was an even bigger one, so why couldn't Mariah do the same? Sure, she had never acted, but director Vonnie Curtis Hall had worked with music stars before, and his first film had what many considered a brilliant performance from the late Tupac Shakur, so hopes were high. Unfortunately, Mariah's ambitions of spreading her success to the two mediums collapsed when the movie, the soundtrack album, and, by most accounts, Mariah's mental health all failed spectacularly. Mariah's career would write itself a few years later, but Glitter still is a dark black stain on her life story, ranking alongside Battlefield Earth and Geely as one of the most infamous bombs of the decade. But is it that bad? Now, I'm of the opinion that very few people have given this movie a fair shake. It's just one of those movies that everyone knows is bad, but unlike other famously bad movies like Birdemic or The Room, very few people have ever tried to confirm this for themselves. Well, I'm not one to back down from a challenge. I'm going to sit down and watch and review the bad movie that bad movie fans won't watch. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the one and only star vehicle of Miss Mariah Carey, Glitter. I give you love. Man, Mariah's really let herself go. No, that's actually her mom. Mom's a drunk bar singer who is actually allowed somehow to bring her daughter Mariah to work and on stage with her. Okay, that was a weird cut, but whatever. Well, we see that Mariah doesn't know her deadbeat dad, and her mom's been fired and has a drinking problem, but they really love each other, so I'm sure they'll be fine. Seriously, these cuts. I'm gonna have to start putting in some better transitions for them. Okay, Mom loses custody, I'm gonna assume because of her booze issues, and Mariah and her cat are sent to an orphanage. And okay, the editing was beyond clumsy, and the cinematography makes me think a tornado is about to take her to Oz, but that intro wasn't terrible. It gives you a lot of information and sets up a clear motivation for her character. Abandonment issues stemming from being given up by her mom at such a young age, not to mention fear that she will become just like her own mother and succumb to the drinking problems that cause her. Well then why is it in the movie? Never mind. Anyway, we then flash forward to 1983, where... Oh, am I watching Showgirls? Oh, uh, no, I guess not. Anyway, a strikingly miscast Terrence Howard recruits Mariah and her friends as backup singers for his protege, an R&B singer who was named Silk because the filmmakers apparently didn't know there's already a singer with that name. Well, unfortunately, Silk sucks a lot. You think that sounded bad? You should hear her first attempt. You got the touch. You got the power. Yeah. Hey Billy. Hey, can you repeat that verse that Silk just did? Turn Silk way down. Bring Billy all the way up. So Terrence has Silk instead lip sync to Mariah, and Mariah goes along with it because why the hell not? The new single debuts the appreciative ears of the club DJ named Dice. Oh! No, different Dice. Anyway, Dice likes it. Oh man, that that was great. Daddy, 
Thanks. Did you really like it? Silk, I had no idea you could blow like that. <laughs> Speaking of blowing, Mariah blows her cover because why the hell not? So into you. That's forever and ever. Dice, now interested, decides to get to know her. I've heard a lot about you, Dice. Well, listen, don't believe everything you hear. Come here, I want to show you something. Where are we going? I'm not gonna bite you, come on. Oh, I'm sorry, I must be sitting on the fast forward button over you. No? No, it's right here. So what the hell was that? This movie hate itself so much it's just speeding through its own scenes? That just looks ridiculous. Actually, hold on, I need a soda. The phone comes, but you can freestyle, you can sing, hell, you can make love to the DJ, that's your thing. I have no words. Anyway, Dice is so impressed with her that he offers to be her manager and producer. Mariah Carey is so excited that, unfortunately, her head explodes. A tragedy, that. I want Billy and the girls. Nah, nah, I can't do it. If you want your artists heard in this club again, you can't. How much? 100,000. No! Dice produces some songs for her, they do well, and they attract record execs just like they wanted. Uh, this is my latest track, but this is the singer, Billy Frank. Yes, yeah, she's the only woman in the entirety of the 1980s without big hair. You know she's special because she doesn't match the setting of the movie at all. You gotta sign her. They get their record deal, and to celebrate, Dice is gonna take her out to dinner. Don't you be getting all freaky on the first date. It's right. not a date. Yes, it right? is a date. It was here that I began to get the horrible suspicion that not only was this character not going away after three scenes, like I thought, he was also supposed to be a romantic lead. But that couldn't possibly be the case. He looks, dresses, and acts like a gay sweat hog. No movie would be so stupid as to try and have this Weasley loser be their leading man. That'd be ridiculous. I was just wondering. Wondering what? Is this a date? I like hanging out with you, Billy. <laughs> oh, I, I bet you say that to all the meal tickets. Okay, now they're back at his place. This cannot possibly be leading where I think it is. This is this is actually called a marimba, and uh, that's one of my favorite instruments. Can you move down a little, please? Thank you. Did he just get Mariah into bed by playing the marimbas? Okay, there are instruments of seduction. Guitar, piano, saxophone on the outside, but... Marimba? Does he only bust out his giant xylophone when he can't kazoo his way into a girl's pants? I just have a little bit of trouble trusting people. Uh, you jumped into bed with a guy named Dice because he played the marimbas. Bullshit! Okay, now he's her manager slash producer slash boyfriend. That's good, I guess. There's so much going on. Who's all the superfluous shit? Uh, that's some good, solid production work right there. Take out all of the things! Oh, by the way, Mariah, you got, uh, you got something on your, uh... On your sh... You know what, never mind. Well, they record a song that every critic in the real world called Mariah's worst single, but in the movie it starts to blow up, so they shoot a video too, and here's where things get sticky. Go. Shake it, shake it, shake. Shake your chichi. No. Just shake your chichi. No. We gotta lose our friends, the two girls. Those are her dances. Oh, well, the director wants other dancers. Where are they? They're home, they're cool. I'm... I gotta go talk to somebody. Well, you can see where this is going. As she becomes more famous, she's losing touch with her friends, and fame and success take her further and further away from her roots, causing her... I wanna see more of her breasts. Well, the video shoot takes a turn for the exploitative, making Mariah very uncomfortable. Around her breasts, come on! So we see the real conflict of the movie. That being famous means compromising her principles and possibly being treated like a piece of meat, forcing her to consider whether fame and success are really worth it in the end. Huh? Huh? Okay. Oh, for the love of Christ, what the hell is the point of this movie? What's the plot? What's the theme? Why does one scene follow the other? Why am I watching this? 
Dice deep sixes the shoot because he's an ass and because we didn't want that thread to go anywhere. Oh, and she's gonna talk to her friends and make up with them just to make sure that we never have a plot seed that actually blooms. You're like my family. I don't wanna lose that. Me neither. All right, Roxy, look, you guys wanna go shopping? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shopping solves everything. Let's just do it. Shopping montage of them trying on outfits and shit. I can't fool myself. I don't want nobody else to ever love me. You are my shining star, my God. Well, more bad news for Dice. The record company is muscling him out of the picture so Mariah can work with other producers, and also apparently Terrence Howard has come back to collect his money so that he can continue to finance Silk's career. And, I really have to wonder what amazing things this chick is doing to him in the bedroom that he's still flogging this dead pony after, what, like two years? Just find another pretty girl who actually can sing. You're in New York, you can find them in the vending machines. Boy, you're determined to make that girl famous. Well, she might have a future hosting reality cooking shows. Have you tried that? You got food in your crib? Well, when you run out, come see me. Because this was a bullshit deal and you know it. Yeah, a bullshit deal that you must have been taking, jerk! Dice decides that he's not going to pay the money he agreed to, and to celebrate his unconscionable stupidity, Mariah and Dice decide to move in together. What's wrong? I found a box of my mom's things. This was hers. Mariah Carey. Vocal range of eight octaves, emotional range of a grapefruit. Dear Diary, I'm really worried about the direction of the movie. There just doesn't seem to be any conflict or momentum moving the plot forward. I, I don't know what to do. Well, they do go to a party. That's for momentum, I guess. <laughs> nice outfit, Dice. I, I, I truly don't understand why they made the decision to set this movie dead smack in the middle of the most dated part of the 80s. There was a lot of nostalgia for the Jerry Curl era of r and I wasn't aware of it, and most of the songs sounded like the music of the early 2000s anyway. It'd be one thing if this was actually made in the 80s and the stupid fashions were just what was in it at the time, but this movie doesn't have that excuse. It's like they're trying to make this story look even stupider than it is. Maybe we should get together. Do something. I love that. You think so? Yeah. Hey, I'm Dice. Well, this one singer is flirting with Mariah and Dice doesn't like that. Also, he feels bad because no one is taking him seriously. Like, gee, I wonder why. See you soon. Get you girls in the car now. What? Get the girls and go to the car. Don't make me make a scene, Billy. Well, gee, do you think you can make a scene more embarrassing than showing up without a goddamn shirt? Wow, he wants to write a song with you. Do you think that he want to actually write a song with you if you were, um, you know, properly dressed? Look at everything here. Everything is hanging out. Says the guy without a shirt! Well, they make up, but the next day this happens. Have you decided what you're going to wear to the after party yet? I remember being invited to a new after party. I haven't received a penny of my money. Now, I don't want to hurt you. But I will. Um, is this necessary? Just, you know, you could sue. Like, if you had a contract, just take him to court. I mean, that is the obvious solution, right? Lawyer up, asshole! That's assuming she had a contract, which... I'm not sure it's true. I, I I just don't understand the transaction here. Was was it like that scene in Almost Famous where the band gambled away their groupies? What the hell is going on? Who is this guy? Somebody Who sold you to Humble Pie for 50 bucks and a case of beer? Billy, what's wrong? He said if you don't pay him his money, he's gonna hurt me. He's gonna hurt you? Yes. Okay. Um... Pretty sure that's not the way the loan shark debtor relationship is supposed to work. With my money! With my money! Oh, that's right. I still have my money because I haven't paid you all the money I owe you. Oops. Mariah has to cancel a performance and brave the paparazzi gauntlet to bail him out from jail, and that begins a fun conversation. I'm not gonna sit around and let you ruin everything that I'm working for. If it wasn't for me, you would be waiting tables. That's Those total your bullshit. No, your Don't blame me for your failure. Think inside your mind that because you swing your ass around on stage, you were some colossal success? Mother would have been proud. Ooh. Well, that's the end of that romance. Never has the breakup of a jealous, possessive dick and a blank-faced emotional cipher been more heartrending. I believed in them. I really did. She kept the cat? How old is that thing? What is it, like 17 at this point? I gotta say goodbye to you. Well, anyway, thank God that dead end of a romance is over. 
She does a duet with the guy that was flirting with her earlier, and thank God this movie is actually provided her with a positive love interest is actually on her level and can help her in her career. Mm. I hate this movie. You know, I can't help but notice this character is still in the movie. I feel like he served his purpose. I don't think we need any more of DJ Douchebag. Yes, that's right. They're composing the song psychically, music and lyrics, together despite being miles apart. This is actually happening. Oh. The. Pathos. And then she goes to his house and finds the song they composed together. Aww. Oh good, they're gonna get back together. I was sure rooting for those two crazy kids. And I'm totally ready to forgive him for being such an insecure, controlling asshole. And his clear tendencies towards violence, and the part where he almost hit her, the fact that he was a horrible impediment to her career, the massive unpaid debts. Oh, hey, speaking of. Hey, Dice. Oh, God. I thought I was sad when Tommy Wiseau died at the end of the room. I. I need a moment. And Mariah finds out he's dead, and it's just so sad. I think we need a montage of this most tragic love story of our time. Memories light the corners of my mind. Misty water color memories of the world. Never take anybody for granted. Never too far away. Well, I guess this was supposed to be the movie's big best selling ballad. And if you listen closely, you can hear the movie actively trying to will itself into becoming the bodyguard. Remember. And I. I Oh, and Dice's last gift to Mariah. Congratulations, Billy. Madison Square Garden. Social services called, and they found your mother. She's living in a small town in Maryland. She's been clean and sober for quite some time. Ma'am, how much further do we have to go? I've been driving for hours. I need to see my kids. And she finds her mom. I guess that's what this movie was about. Oh. <laughs> You've been clean and sober for years?! Why didn't you call me, bitch?! So, that was Glitter. Was it that bad? Um... Yes, in that it was tediously paced, bizarrely edited, and had wooden performances of hollow characters with poorly defined motivations. Basically, it was bad in none of the fun ways. It's just a hollow, empty movie without any right to exist. And by the way, was it just me or did Mariah do nothing in this movie? I mean, stuff happens to her, but all she does is react to it by putting a sad face on. She doesn't learn anything, she doesn't become a stronger person. You can replace the character with a mannequin that plays Mariah Carey CDs and nothing would change. That's how worthless the character is. You can replace her with a statue and a CD player. You know, there's an idea. That Kesha song is terrible. What a terrible Kesha song. Making these videos just got so much easier.